Hey everyone, welcome back to the range. My name is Matt, also known as the King of Armor Destruction and the Armor Wizard Zap Zap. I've got a body armor test today for you all. In full transparency, Tacticon Armament contacted me and asked me to review, demo their armor with no strings attached. Now I would venture to say a lot of my viewers are fairly well versed in the personal protection body armor equipment space, and they know the pros and cons of certain types of body armor. The armor we have to test from them today is their AR-600 steel body armor. This particular cut right here is a hefty seven pounds. If you go to these other cuts you see here in this camera, they are about six pounds and nine ounces. It is 14.45 millimeters thick or in freedom units, 570 thousandths. Depending on where you measure it, it was a little thinner and thicker in some sections. I'm guessing it's because of the way that they coat the fragmentation spall coating on it that makes up for that difference. I would have to venture to guess that the internal thickness of our steel core is probably somewhere right around anywhere from 200 thousandths to a quarter of an inch thick. Now for all my redneck science or demos or whatever you want to call them, I try to stick to some NIJ constants out here in my woods so that we have some good data to take away from this. Since this is rifle armor, we shoot at 45 feet. We also shoot at zero degrees because that is worst case scenario. Since this is steel core and doesn't employ any kind of ceramic in it, we do not need to drop it on its face two times as a preconditioning test. I also use a giant clay brief briefcase filled with Roma Plastilina number one clay donated by Chavant that acts as a compressible media. Again, because I'm out here at the range, I can't heat that up to 100 degrees to get it to actually certify for the ball drop. The NIJ allows for a maximum of 44 millimeters impression in the clay. In our past experiences when testing steel core body armor, that typically tends to show less, less localized back face deformation when testing some of our larger calibers such as 308. We also use a chronograph whenever possible because we need to know the velocity of that bullet. I have a spreadsheet here at the beginning that I fill out at the end and have all the velocity figures and whether a round penetrated or not. Now I would say a lot of my viewers and followers are well versed in the material types used to construct our personal protection equipment or our body armor. We normally have steel core, we have our ultra high molecular weight polyethylene, we have aramid fiber stuff which is basically like Kevlar I think is the brand name, and then we have ceramic, whether it's silicon carbide, alumina, or boron carbide, or some advanced space age name that I haven't heard of. Typically with ceramic, you have polyethylene behind it. All of those categories have their positives and minuses. Some of them have more negatives than the other. I'm not really here to try to sway you either way. I just want to give you guys the information so that you can do your own research and come up with your own solutions. Now with our steel core body armors, they are really good at stopping some of our threats like M855, but our 55 grain full metal jacket M193 tends to be an issue for steel unless it's high hardness enough. Then when you get into the high hardness things, it can become brittle and rounds like our 308, if you pump enough of them on the plate, you can crack them. So we're gonna test the upper limits of this Tacticon plate today and see what it can handle. Now it's time to see how well that fragmentation coating holds up. I've got out our longest 308 barrel. This is our Savage Access 110 left hand, 24 inch 110 twist barrel with the JK Armament rifle kit on there. So we've got M80 ball, that's a 145 to 150 grain full metal jacket. The NIJ spec is 2750 feet per second. With this barrel, we've been seeing upwards of 200 feet per second over that, so it's a good test for this plate. We'll take three shots from this, and then I'll go check it, and depending on how it goes, we may take three more with this gun, or we may step down to the 22 inch. Again, this is all worst case scenario. Someone engaging a threat with a 24 inch barrel at 45 feet, likely not gonna happen. You're gonna experience this at range, and that's where some of these shorter barrel lengths come in handy. But you know if it stops it at you know 2,900 feet per second at 45 feet, it's gonna stop it at distance going slower. So this should be in the upper part of the plate. Twenty nine thirteen. And then I'll place this one off to the right. Twenty-nine 
And then this one will be back to the left. Probably gonna shoot my strap. You can see I haven't changed our barrel length. We're gonna shoot three more shots of our M80 ball. This is Poon Sang Surplus from the 1983. Pretty good velocity off of it. I think it's only surpassed by the newer Lake City Winchester M80 ball loading. So this will be on the right side of the plate below shot number two. Back to the left side. Oops, got an air off that one. Or is it 2873? Hard to tell. There you all go. Six shots of overspec M80 ball on this plate. All fair hits. One, two, three, four, five, six. Probably could throw some more shots of 5.56 on here, but we'll save that for plate number three. Plate is falling. Place those bets in the comments below. Ho! Oh, no pass through, folks. This shot right over here was the most for back face wise. And it's still very controlled. We're not even gonna measure that. Like I said, we're just using this as a compressible media. Always defer to actual NIJ testing for bat face measurements. Now, like I said, the downside of this type of fragmentation coating is that higher energy rounds can actually cause it to separate. As you see right there, you can see some of the fragments in there. And it's typically what happens is those fragments come out this way and that energy separates this coating from our steel there are different companies who have come up with you know quote unquote better mouse traps to address this my opinion is if you're going to run steel i would run the thickest coating they have available and there are kevlar spall sleeves i should say like an envelope that you put this down inside and then cover it up with and those heavier duty fabrics like the aramid and the kevlar are going to catch those fragments obviously in a plate carrier that's going to catch some of it too but it didn't look like we had too much go off to the sides there but if i kept shooting this with 308 it eventually would delaminate this rubberized like coating from here pretty impressive that this harder steel plate could handle six shots of m80 ball like i said the harder the steel the more brittle it can become a 16 inch barrel right here we're going to take three shots of our independence m193 at this plate and then we'll go down and see what it did and then we'll base some of our other threats upon that we can go up in barrel length or even shorter there's a lot of misinformation online about you know m193 and the M193 is actually a military specification. And there's a bunch of different qualifications that make whatever, you know, this particular round M193. And one of those specifications is velocity. From a 20 inch barrel, it's gotta hit 3167 feet per second at 78 feet from the muzzle. So if we're using a 20 inch and we're getting over 3200 at my 12 feet, that's the good spec for M193. Typically our Lake City M193, our Winchester new M193 in this Independence is known for having good velocity. We have a Primary Arms 1X Cyclops up top. So this should be in the upper part of the plate. Thirty-one eighty-nine, good velocity off that. Getting pretty good velocity. Hopefully I'm actually hitting on the plate. It should be about a two inch drop for me at this distance, with this optic. And then this is number three. It's kind of smoky outside today. Now we've upped our barrel length for maximum velocity. This is our TC Compass with a 22 inch barrel, a turbo 556 suppressor on there. So we should see maximum velocity. Again, with our steel core body armor 
it's weak against M193, but M855, which I have pictured here with the green painted tip, this has a little conical steel insert inside of it with a lead core. Steel can stop that, and I also have M855A1, that is the Army's current issue ball round. It's an evolution of M855. It has a copper core and a much larger and harder steel arrow tip head. We'll check our plate after these shots and then vary up our barrel length depending on the results. I will say the coating is kind of hard to pick out the shots down there on and I put all these rounds in the wrong magazine. Sorry about that. So M855 first, then the A1 second. We should see 3,100 feet per second from the M855 and over that with the A1 variant. Ooh, getting good velocity today. This will be right next to it. And then we'll go right one more on that same line. That might have been an edge shot. Getting really good velocity today. This will be on the next line. All right, let's go see what we did. It's gonna be really hard to see the shot placement on here because of this frag coating. We have nine shots of 5.56 five, on here, and it looks like we have zero frag coming out of the side so far. This is a brand new table. Hopefully it still stays brand new when we're done testing. But our first shot of M193 was right about there. Our second shot was over here. Our third shot was down here somewhere. Then M855, number one, two and three all right in a row then our a one one two three all right in a row so we have one two three four five more spots left on this plate place those bets in the comments below uh oh raggy that not good so we have a penetration from shot number two and three on the m193 and then all three shots of M855A1. All three shots of M855 were stopped. This plate may need to be a little harder to stop our M855A1. So that means we're gonna go back to the bench there, pick up the 14 and a half inch for the M193 and the 16 inch probably for the M855A1. Back to our M193, we've brought out a shorter barrel length. This is a 14 and a half inch upper from Pro 2A Tactical. Contacted them because I was looking for a 14 and a half inch upper that didn't have a pinned flash hider or muzzle brake on it. This is on an SBR lower. Got a Primary Arms 3X Cyclops up top. So these should be the bottom right. little over 30, 50 feet per second. Huh, that one jumped up in velocity from the... And now we brought out the 16 inch for another two shots of M855A1. These should be in the bottom left of the plate.
Our final four shots, I believe, are fair hits. Our A1 shot, number one, was right there. Our shot number two was right there. We were a little low there, but usually steel is good at taking edge shots. Our M193, number one, was somewhere in that general area. And then number two was right here. That is definitely a fair hit. Now, this one had a 100 feet per second gain in velocity compared to shot number one. Place those bets in the comments below. Uh oh, Raggy, we have a penetration from that higher velocity M193 as well as the M855A1. I just broke my pencil. You can see those penetrations there and there. Pretty much used up this plate. We're on to plate number three, and I want to retest our M855A1 from our 14 inch barrel before moving on to two very special threats outside of the purview of the NIJ, but seeing how, like I said, we had three plates, I want to kind of see what steel is going to do against them. So we have two more rounds of M855A1 M8 first. Getting late in the day. Sorry about that. So this should be the upper left of the plate. Two eight eight nine, good velocity, and then this one will be on the right hand side of the plate. Hopefully, the third camera that I run facing the plate showed you that smoke that just rolled off that sucker. I have two final threats I want to throw at this plate. One of them is a very common threat that is used for our level four specification, but that is going 2880 feet per second. That is our M2AP that has a very long steel core, 163 grains, very tough to stop. Then I have M80A1 that is the Army's current issue ball round in 762 NATO. Just like M855A1, it has a copper core and a large arrowhead steel tip. That tip is not as hard as the M855A1. What I have for you is a 13 inch SCAR pistol. This is running on the Imperial Arms 80% upper and their MTM lower, which uses P mags and any standard AR-15, AR-10 trigger. I'm very curious on what this is gonna do. This is more for shits and giggles. I'm not sure what the offset is going to be, so we'll, we'll shoot for the middle of the plate with this round. Home stretch now, folks. Our M855A1 shots, number one and two from the 14 and a half inch. Our M80A1 was right there, and our M2. AP was right there. Place those bets in the comments below. Come on, little plate. Ruh oh, raggy. Both of our 308 rounds penetrated that. And even our M855A1. Looks like this particular hardness and whatever, you know, type steel this is, is not going to be advantageous against M855A1, but again, that is not currently in any kind of NIJ rating, and it's a special threat rating. I know, I know I said those shots were last, but I figured I got six more for you. We'll do this as fast as we can. We brought out our 10 and a half inch upper, the Yankee Hill Turbo 556 on here, got the primary arm 3X optic. We'll take three shots of our Independence M193 second, and then first we'll take Three more shots of our M855A1. So the A1 will be the upper middle of the plate. And then M193 will be in the bottom row. All right. Now, 
we're finally done. I can't call myself the king of armor destruction and the armor wizard if I don't attempt to defeat plates every now and then. So we've got six more shots on this plate. Our fragmentation coating is still holding again. Against 556 threats, it does pretty good. M855A1 shots number one, two, and three. Those are all fair hits. Our M193 shots number one, two, and three. I'm gonna need a new backer on my clay briefcase because it is full of holes. Surprisingly, I haven't smoked my clay, my straps today. Hey! No pass-throughs, folks. So it looks like at that velocity, our 10 and a half inch barrel definitely will stop M855A1 and M193. Well, my hunt for an NIJ07RF1 and two steel plate continues. I half wonder if maybe that's why it's taken so long to publish those standards is maybe there's some pushback from certain manufacturers because of the higher velocity threshold that they're giving on stopping M193. This particular plate had no problem stopping our M80 ball at above the NIJ specified velocity, probably why they rate it for 300 wind mag. I did not bring the 300 wind chad out here today. The M855 was no issue. And then with M M193, once we get around that 3150 feet per second, that tends to be a problem for steel. For our M855A1, that was a little surprising for me because typically with anything AR600 and harder, that round is usually stopped because it's kind of similarly constructed to M855 and the steel penetrating tip kind of gets in the way of the rest of the bullet. But we had to step all the way down to the 10 and a half inch to actually stop it from this plate. With all that being said, I'm gonna get out of here and go home and have some dinner. At the end of all my videos, I take a moment to thank all those who helped make these possible. Number one is my Patreon and subscribe star fans. Number two is Tacticon Armament, who again, in full transparency, sent me that plate, sent me those plates to demo with no strings attached. I do like how they have lot numbers and a little batch number on the back here so that if you want to go see this particular set of steel threat rated in batches they have videos available on their website and of course number three is you all for watching until next time i'll catch you at the range